as human beings, we're no better than anybody else. All human beings are steeped in sin. All human beings are twisted and corrupt. We are the keepers of an idea, of a Western idea that has made the world a better place. Our idea is a good idea. The ideas that come out of uh, America and the West, the idea of the individual. And all of these ideas are under attack. The idea of the individual, as I, I said last week, comes out of Catholic theology. It is built by Christian theology slowly over long centuries. This idea that you are an individual with dignity and with the rights, uh, with certain rights. And yet now we were suddenly being told that Christianity was against the individual and the West was somehow hampering the individual. The liberty, the, the idea of liberty, that an individual should be free to decide whether he gets a vaccine or not, uh, to, to make his own decisions and the government should be restricted from, res, the government should be restricted from restricting the individual's freedom. That too, that also came out of Western thought and Christian thought. And now we were be, being told that Western thought and Christian thought were the bad things. Tear down the statues, get rid of the religious people. They're making, uh, they're making us slaves when it was really religion that made us free. Christianity gave us science. You know, this is an important thing. I'm going to have a guy on, I'm reading his book now and I'll have him on in a couple of weeks, but it was the idea, you know, the Greeks who were famous for their reason, they didn't invent science the way the Christian West did. The Christian West did because they thought not only that God was reasonable and could be understood, but they thought that God was free and he could do whatever he wanted. So in order to figure out what he was doing, we had to look at it. We had to study it. And that's where the idea that became science comes from. That too was a Christian thing. And suddenly we were being told that Christianity was anti-science and we don't know what we're talking about. We have done many bad things. We're doing them right now when we abort children at the rate of 3,000 a day. We're doing very, very many bad things that we will answer for before the throne of God. But these ideas were better than the Islamist ideas. And the Islamist ideas were bad, right? And we see this now as the Taliban is taking back Afghanistan and all... You know, they're doing horrible things already. They're killing women. They're just uh, destroying the freedoms of women. And the State Department is issuing statements like, well, you know, we're afraid their new government is not diverse. <laughs> it's not diverse. You know, uh, Peter Ducey was asking, uh, I think, Jen Psaki about this. Is it cut six? There are now more terrorists wanted by the FBI and the new Afghan government than there are women. Does the president think that is a foreign policy success? Well, first of all, no one in this administration, not the president, nor anyone on the national security team, would suggest that the Taliban are respected and valued members of the global community. They have not earned that in any way, and we're not, we have never assessed that. So, so you know, the, the reason they can't have women is because a woman's work in Afghanistan is never done. She's so busy dodging bullets that they can't really have, they don't really have time for government. She's got to, you know, cook, she's got to clean, she's got to take care of the sheep and dodge the Taliban who are trying to kill her for trying to be a free human being. So that's why they're not in the government. You know, they have a good reason. But the thing is, I couldn't help but notice that I had been out of the country for seven years, but right before 9-11. I came back right before 9-11. So I've been out of the country and the country had changed a great deal. And one of the things that had changed was nobody discussed anything anymore. You opened your mouth and you were called a racist. You said anything about the fact that the left was wrong about something and you were called racist, you were called sexist, you were called hateful. It was always shut up. There was no way to actually have an argument. You could only, you know, the, the right was kind of flabbergasted. They were trying to say, you know, this is a, this is our ideas are good and their ideas are bad. And they said, well, you're Islamophobic. As if people just woke up one day and said, you know what I'm afraid of? Islam. You know, it's just like a phobia. It's an irrational fear. Had nothing to do with that great pit in the middle of downtown Manhattan. Had nothing to do with that. It was just phobia. You were just phobic. You know, it, it, you, there's no, there was no way to discuss these ideas. And the reason for that was that 9-11, what happened on 9-11, proved every single thing the left had been teaching us and was teaching our children in our universities and in our public schools, every single thing was wrong. Postmodernism was wrong. This was the idea that there was no truth and there was no good or bad and anything, you know, it's just the way you looked at it. There's nothing good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Suddenly we thought, no, you know what? That looked pretty evil to me. That actually looked evil. Like the people going and doing business and wanting to go home to their families, that looked good. Driving a plane into a bunch of buildings to... Uh, to spread a theocratic rule, that 
I don't know, you know, call me crazy, but that looked evil to me. So relativism was disproved. Multiculturalism. Listen, I, I've said this before. I'm all for multi-ethnicity. I think multi-ethnicity is an American idea. It's a wonderful thing. It is a, it's the wave of the future. If we can pull it off, maybe we can't pull it off. Multi-ethnicity is different than multiculturalism. Some cultures suck. Some cultures are evil. And this is the thing. If you ask the left, they say, no, no, that's uh, offending somebody else's culture. And I think, well, what about the culture of the South where they kept black Black people slaves. And that you try it. It's, it's wonderful to watch them stammer because some cultures have good ideas and some cultures have bad ideas. It's not the people. People are pretty, you know, they're evil people, but they're very rare, actually. Most people are just created by their culture and most people don't think their way out of their culture. Atheism fell apart. Atheism was not such a good idea because in order because our ideas were based on Christianity. We needed at least, at least a basic idea of a God of love to counter these people with their God of hatred and cruelty. And also feminism, which left the women of Islam in the lurch, had nothing to say about them and, and looked pretty stupid when a bunch of men, namely firemen and policemen, were charging into those collapsing buildings. So all these ideas turned out to be untrue. And here is the thing. People do not change their minds. Their ideas come from their parents. Their ideas come from their society. Their ideas come from their own ruminations. And when you show them that their ideas are wrong, you can prove it to them, they don't change their minds. I once asked a friend of mine who has the same politics, maybe a little to the right. I said, how come everybody loves you and everybody, I'm enemy, public enemy number one. He said, I don't discuss my ideas. And the reason I don't discuss my ideas is if I sit there and prove to them that Trump is doing a good thing, they get up from the table and they don't think, oh, He's proved to me that Trump is doing a good thing. Therefore, Trump is doing a good thing. They get up from the table and they say, he proved to me that Trump is doing a good thing, so he's a bad person. They do not change their minds. You know, I and Hersia Lee did this video for Prager comparing Islamism to wokeism. And she admits there are lots and lots of differences between wokeism and Islamism. But she makes this comparison, which I thought was pretty valid. This is cut four. Both like burning the American flag. Both take offense at every opportunity and demand not just apologies, but concessions. Islamism invades against blasphemy. Wokeism wants to outlaw hate speech. Islamists use the word Islamophobia to silence critics. The woke do the same with racism. Both ideologies aim to tear down the existing system and replace it with utopias that always turn out to be hellish anarchies. Islamic State in Raqqa, the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone in Seattle. Both are collectivist. Group identity trumps the individual. Both tolerate and often glorify violence carried out by zealots. The grievances of Islamists and the woke aren't merely economic, and they won't be satisfied with jobs or entitlements or any other blandishments politicians are willing to offer. Their motivations are ideological, and they'll be satisfied only with power. And then they'll demand more power. See, that's the key thing. This is the key thing. The Islamists didn't attack us because of us. They attacked us because they are grown human beings, grown adults with ideas. They have ideas. Those ideas don't like our ideas and they wanted to attack us. And instead of saying, you know, yeah, we've done bad things. We should not do bad things. We can change those things, but we have to defend our ideas. The left has abandoned those ideas and they have done it in the name of Marxist ideology. All of it comes down to Marxist ideology, this collectivist ideology, which has failed everywhere. And again, it's one more idea that has failed that they will not let go. It failed in the Soviet Union. It failed in Scandinavia. This is the big joke. Bernie Sanders is always saying, we need something more like Norway. And you say, well, Norway doesn't have socialism. Well, I don't know anything about Norway. <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> what are you talking about? All of these ideas have failed, and because they failed and because people will not change their mind, they have slipped into this um, system of personal insult and personal attack that has silenced everybody and has made us insane. We can't, can't debate with each other anymore because we are too busy hating one another, because our jobs are on the line, because anything we say is, is, will be held against us, not in a court of law, but in the court of public opinion. There was, uh, who was it? Chris Rufo found this document that is going in, inside Google from their, what are they called? Their inclusion people, uh, where they've created an internal document called Anti-Racism Resources. And it has this graphic called the White Supremacy Pyramid. And it's things that people say that they think lead to white supremacy, like all lives matter or like 
everybody, you know, there is no such thing as, as race. We don't care about race. All of those things. And it's a bunch of evil people like Donald Trump who lead to, up the pyramid to the real fascists. And of course, at the top, there are some real fascists and all this. But you know who's at the bottom of the pit? You know who's the gateway drug? Shapiro, Ben Shapiro, Mr. Genocide himself. They're accusing Ben Shapiro. Shapiro of genocide. My feeling about that is like, I just hope he has time with all the genocide to still sign the checks. But, but you know, th- this is, this is the kind of insanity that drives people crazy. It makes us hate us more. But the more their ideas fail, the more their ideas fail, the more they have to find people to hate and reasons to hate them. And that is the, that's the state of play right now. 9-11, just like the fall of the Soviet Union, 9-11 proved once again that the left's theories all of which are kind of a mask for socialism, but they have new theories all the time. But their relativism, their atheism, their anti-Americanism, all of them were false. And so in order to keep those ideas, because nobody gives up their false ideas, in order to keep those ideas, they have had to resort to this shut upery, this system of insult. And that's what's driven us insane. And that, more than anything, is what has led to this slump we're in, this possible decline we're in 20 years after we were attacked by the worst people on the globe.